All right, guys, in this video, we're gonna break down direct mail marketing. Household easy, we close fast, and anytime that works for you, your house don't need. So, direct mail marketing is you putting your message out in front of other people that are gonna presume to have motivation. So whenever we're doing any type of marketing, we are going to be marketing to individuals, to property owners that we are going to presume are gonna have some sort of distressed situation in their life, like death, divorce, disease, job relocation, maybe they can't afford to pay their mortgage and they're in foreclosure or pre-foreclosure, maybe they haven't paid their property taxes in two or three years and they have delinquent taxes, Maybe there's other situations in their life. These people, we presume as investors, as wholesalers, have a high likelihood of needing to sell a property to solve some problems in their life. And they're often willing to trade discounts for convenience. So when I'm sending direct mail, there are a couple of lists or areas that I like to target. Now, before we jump into that, there's also the properties themselves that can be distressed. So I mentioned already some personal problems that people may be facing in their life that we can help solve that would make for a good opportunity. But there's also ways of finding properties themselves that are going to be good opportunity, right? So it's either the people or the property that are distressed. So a distressed property can often be fine, can be found by driving for dollars. But driving for dollars is you just driving around looking at properties and finding the properties that have trees on the roofs or boarded up windows or broken down cars in the driveway, or maybe they're abandoned and vacant, or maybe they have landscaping that hasn't been trimmed or cut in months or years in some cases, and they are very distressed. You have peel and paint, you know, all these different things. So one way would be to drive around and build your own list of properties, or another way would be to go online and to find lists of people that would have presumed motivation. So some of my favorite lists, and I don't really care what market you're in, doesn't really matter, are gonna be the properties that are vacant. If somebody owns a property that's vacant, that is not an asset, that's a liability. They have to pay every month in taxes, probably property insurance, and if they don't, that's pretty dumb. And or if they have any debt on that property, a mortgage. Additionally, they may have utilities like a sewer bill, a water bill, an electric bill, maybe a natural gas bill, maybe even cable in some cases. So these properties are costing people money to own. And if they're not living in them or renting them out, they're just throwing money into a fireplace. So the distressed property is going to be a great place to mail to and or finding a vacant home that is gonna be costing somebody to own is also going to be a great list. In fact, one of my favorite lists to market to. Another good list to market to would be your absentee owners. Absentee owners, all that means is that the property address that they own, they have to pay taxes on. Well, that tax bill is going to be sent somewhere else to a mailing address. They have a property address and they have a mailing address. So the absentee owners, the way we define these and describe these, are literally just people that have different mailing addresses for their tax records and for their tax bill, right? The vacant houses are gonna be flagged by the United States Post Office. So the data that we are gonna be getting from our list providers, and we'll drop some, some links to our favorite list providers down below, but these list providers are getting this information literally from the United States Post Office or from the county records within every single county in the nation. So the vacant properties lists and the absentee owner property lists are gonna be the absolute best list to start with. But then next we can go after other sources of motivation like death, divorce, disease, pre-foreclosure, you know, delinquent taxes. Maybe they have code violations. Those are lists that we can get as well. So all these lists are gonna be good lists that we can use. Don't overthink it. Get one, then move on to the next couple. Start with your vacants, start with your absentees. My personal favorite is to drive for dollars, but I hit all the lists and I keep hitting them. And what I do is I hit them with postcards. And in fact, here is postcards that have come back to me and my business in just the last couple of weeks. We send a lot of mail. And whenever I send mail, I typically like to use postcards. And the postcards that I use, let's get a better example that actually has a picture of a house on it. This one has got a picture of a house on it. It's upside down. And that house looks kind of run down. And it just says, sell 117 North Elm Avenue today. Want to sell this property? We're local investors and we love buying houses. We can get a price in place virtually or in person and close ASAP and pay cash 
as well as buy the property as is. But on the back, it just has a picture of me, and it has some contact information, and it has just the regular postcard. It's very, very simple. So again, we send hundreds, we send thousands of postcards each and every week or every month to get sellers to call us. This is direct mail right here. Now, I like postcards because they're cheaper and you can do more of them. You can get more for your money. In fact, I'm on a couple of different websites right now. And again, I'll drop some links below to not only my favorite list providers, but my favorite place to find and send the best direct mail templates. So postcards can start at around 41, maybe 42 cents and go up from there. So you can get a quite a good bang for your buck. Now you can also send what's referred to as the yellow letters, or bigger postcards, or you know, all different types of mail. You're not just limited to postcards, but with a yellow letter or just any other type of letter, you're typically gonna be looking more like 53 to 55 cents entry that could even go up to 60, 70, 80 cents. And there's even companies out there like one of my good buddies who has ballpoint marketing that maybe a dollar or a dollar 20 per mailer but those mailers may have a much higher response rate than the cheaper mailers. So you're gonna kind of get what you pay for, but at the end of the day, I like the postcards because the postcards are going to allow you to get more marketing out for your dollars, all right? So postcards, just a hair over 40 cents a piece, you know, and it's gonna vary how many you're sending and you know what sites you're using. Guys, again, I'm gonna drop some links below this video that are gonna break down the best list to use, which we've already covered, they're the vacants, they're the absentees, they're the driving for dollars list, and how you can go pull these lists or use apps to drive for dollars, and then where you can go to send mail. Do not overthink the sending of the mail. Most of these sites that we're using, they have templates. So just pick a template that you like and send the mail. Now, a couple pro tips about sending mail before we wrap up. Number one, you don't typically just wanna send mail to somebody one time. Ideally, you can hit them with four or five or six times. This is referred to as touches. We want to touch our motivated seller opportunities, our property owners that have some form of presumed motivation. We want to touch them five, six, sometimes even seven times. So if I were you, I would budget to market to these individuals. Personally, when I do campaigns, I like to do a minimum of three or four touches every time I go pull a list before I go pull another list. I want to hit that list three or four or five or oftentimes six different times before I move on to the next list. So a good rule of thumb will be to market to somebody on a list anywhere between every three weeks and three months, all right? Anywhere in between. If you do it three weeks, you're gonna get through those more and more quickly. If you do three months, it's gonna take you longer. But regardless, you wanna be consistent with your marketing efforts. Now, on your postcard, all that you need to focus on is a couple things. Now, we previously mentioned convenience. That's what we do. That's how we help people sell properties and, and solve problems for the most part. We, we help them by buying properties so they can sell them and they can solve their problems. But the best people that are going to have problems are going to be the ones that have a presumed level of motivation. And these motivational factors are the people that we're going to be marketing to. So whenever we are sending direct mail, we are going to be focusing on offering them convenience. Guys, what does that convenience look like? Well, it's really only a couple things. It's that we can buy their property and we can close fast. Number two is that we're going to pay cash. Now, I buy 100 houses a year and I never use my own cash. I always use my cash buyer, my, my landlord or my fix and flippers cash. But we partner together to buy this property from that seller. So not only do we buy it and buy it fast, but we pay cash. Doesn't have to be your cash. And then last but not least, guys, we're buying properties as is. So on your postcard, on your letter, put these things. Put that we close fast and we pay cash and we buy these properties as is. These are the things that we're gonna wanna market to these sellers or these property owners that we presume have motivation. Additionally, we wanna put contact information on there. We wanna put our name, our phone number, and maybe our website or our email address. And if you have a fax, put the fax number on there too. The more ways that you can give a seller to reach out to you, the more opportunity you're gonna to create to help an individual out and make a wholesale deal and a healthy spread in the process. So guys, direct mail is one of the best ways to find motivated sellers 
and to get them to call you. And the cool thing about direct mail is this direct mail is not very time consuming. You have to spend money on this source of marketing, but you are putting your message out in front of people and then they call you. Want to know a secret about marketing? All roads lead to a phone call. Either you call them or they call you. It doesn't matter what type of marketing you're doing. Even if it's a website that you're marketing and they go and they fill out an application and you get an email, you should probably call them and connect. Or maybe you're just cold calling people. So at the end of the day, all roads lead to a phone call. And direct mail is a great place for people that have you know money to spend on marketing, but not a lot of time because they can pay to get their message out in front of people that have presumed motivation and hope that those people will pick up the phone or go online and connect with you in your business. So offer the conveniences. Offer a way for them to connect with you. Don't overthink it. That's what direct mail is. It's getting you the ability to connect with somebody that has a problem so you can offer to help them solve that problem by buying a property from them. And the more convenience you give them, we're going to close quick. We're going to buy it as is and we're going to pay you cash. Well, guys, that should demand a discount. Why would you go out of your way to go do all those things if they're not going to give you a discount? So if they give you a discount, you better be offering to make their life convenient because that's how we solve problems. So don't overthink direct mail. Below this video, we're going to have some links to some of our favorite places to get lists, our D4D favorite apps, as well as favorite places to go send direct mail. Don't overthink it, guys. Just get the mail out the door and mail it to the people that we presume to have motivation and make sure you mail them multiple times. I would say a minimum of three or four times, you know, with a maximum of maybe seven or eight times. But be consistent. And again, a good rule of thumb would be every three weeks to every three months to mail to an individual on one of your lists. House so easy, we close fast and any time that works for you. Your house don't need it, we'll throw cash, it hits so fast, don't know what to do. 